Hi, my name is Hassan Adib. I'm a PhD student in the University of Tartu Institute of Computer Science. And today I will present my empirical analysis of integrating feature extraction to the automated machine learning pipeline. This work is done by me, Shota Mashukili and Rado Ishawi. Uh, this paper has been accepted to the Integrated Artificial Intelligence in Data Science Workshop. It's a workshop in the ICPR conference and it will be presented in January 2021. As you know that uh, nonlinear patterns are harder to learn it through the machine learning models, whether it is a regression or a classification problem. That's why most of the data scientists prefer to use a complex models to, uh, to, to find out and learn these uh, these nonlinear patterns like the separation line if it's a classification problem for example as for, for instance these complex uh, these complex classifiers or models are neural networks support vector machine or ensemble models uh, although these models are very good and it learns very very task specific features and it, the, the prediction of this task is very good but it requires an enormous a number of training instances for the learning process and it's also hard to trust especially in very sensitive domains like uh, medical domains or financial domains so that's why most uh, some people prefer to apply some feature engineering tricks in order to change or uh, transfer these uh, these nonlinear patterns into a linear uh, ones linear patterns and so the linear classifiers or linear models can be applied uh, directly into these data sets uh, which which is completely acceptable or interpretable uh, and also you can apply this complex model and the learning process will be will be uh, will, will be faster will be faster and the prediction accur accuracy will be also improved uh, mostly these feature engineering uh, tricks and uh, techniques are not straightforward and that require, that's why it requires uh, a skillful machine learning experts and basically it consumes most of the project time as reported by the data scientists uh, on Kaggle's the top data scientists on Kaggle reports that feature engineering um, part consumes most of their time so the uh, machine learning experts receive this data set as an input and they uh, do their best in order to generate the uh, the optimal pipeline that uh, that takes the data pre-process it clean it and then extract and uh, and select some uh, some uh, feature pool to be fed into the machine learning model and finally this pipeline will be evaluated using the uh, performance score that they choose uh, automated machine learning as uh, automated machine learning frameworks are doing the same task which is receiving the same input data set and building the complete pipeline but unfortunately they doesn't perform or generate any new features they may reduce the dimensionality or the number of features within the, the input data set using some algorithms like PCA, LDA, but <laughs> there, is, there is no explicit feature extraction uh, is done. So basically they are searching for the optimal pipeline graph and then each node of this graph, they select the best performing algorithm and tune its own hyperparameter. The optimal pipeline is the one that uh, minimize this uh, objective function. The pipeline that is trained on the train split and validated on the uh, validation split with minimal with minimum loss. Sometimes they apply cross validation, sometimes they don't. This uh, then this is the optimal pipeline that will that that the framework will return. Uh, but does it very or really important to include uh, some feature extraction techniques let's see some motivating example to feel the uh, the effect of feature extraction and how it can contribute or improve the performance score here we have a data set commercial data set uh, for some promotions and we have some features about the person that who received these promotions and some features about the promotion itself and one feature for the number of, pro of promotions the user has received so far 
and the number of promotions the user used before receiving this uh, th this current promotion and the task is to predict if he will use or this current promotion or not um, we can we can improve the performance uh, of the machine learning model uh, dramatically if we added a feature like uh, like the difference uh, the difference is this feature this feature is uh, is extracted like this first of all we we order the the uh, the rows uh, ascendingly for each user by the by the the number of by the number of the promotions he has received so far so this is the first the second and so on and this for the difference feature we just uh, we just compute the difference between two consecutive rows for the promotion that the user used so far so this uh, for this row one minus zero will be one one minus one will be zero and so on as we see the the feature the new feature the new extracted feature which is the difference is uh, approximately or almost the same as the target feature so it's really correlated to the the uh, the target output and including it in the machine learning model is model is expect is expected to boost the performance accuracy so can we do can we automate this uh, feature engineering pr feature engineering problem yes and there is a lot of research has, uh, uh, and advancement has been done in this field most of them are, are, are applying some transformations over the uh, over the uh, the row input features like the one that we did previously those transformations are are uh, some arithmetic operators like the logarithmic uh, square 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 root of the input features and we can categorize these uh, uh, these techniques into two families the first one is generate and select and the second one is iterative and uh, is iterative generate and select let's see the difference between them and the first one which is uh, generate and select mostly uh, the uh, those techniques generate a very large pool of features by applying these uh, transformations which which are the arithmetic operations over the input features again and again uh, and at the end they apply single feature selection to select a subset of this feature pool to be fed into the machine learning model uh, this technique is very good because it uh, they the, the, the feature that they create they can they can uh, combine them all together to create a new and a more complex feature that is expected to be more informative but on the other hand it requires a, a, a tremendous amount of memory uh, so it's memory intensive and most of the data sets will suffer will will have a memory uh, memory errors on the other hand the iterative approach they starts with uh, the the row the row data sets they apply some feature extraction techniques using the same operators but they doesn't uh, they doesn't extract or generate a very large pool uh, they generate a, a, a small set of, of the feature and then uh, do uh, and then reduce the number of generated features by uh, you, by uh, a feature selection step and then go back to extracting some uh, some different features apply the feature selection feature extraction and so on and at the end they uh, at the end they re just report the, the final selected features to the machine learning model to be uh, to be trained on this is uh, a time consume a very time consuming approach and also some of the of the feature some of the uh, important feature may be missed if they if they uh, dropped on the early stages of the feature selection uh, in the feature selection steps so uh, in our in our study we used uh, an automated feature engineering tool tool called uh, autofeed basically the, the it follows the generate and the, the generate and select uh, approach where it applies these transformations which are uh, a unary operators unary arithmetic operators over the row features and generate this first there's a first step feature pool and then they apply some combination using also arithmetic binary uh, binary uh, arithmetic operations like multiplication summation and so on over the feature generated in the first step 
then they can follow again by applying the same transformation and then combination transformation combination and you can uh, go as much as you can or as much memory as you can afford for this exponentially uh, for, for exponentially uh, increasing approach because <coughs> uh, basically we started here with th only three features after the first transformation they turned into 20 and after applying the combination they turned into 200 and at the beginning they were in, uh, we started with only three features so a transformation and combination this is a single iteration and the authors recommend to use two iterations so what is the expected improvement if we integrated auto feed to the automated machine learning pipeline and this is the the main question that we are trying to answer in this and uh, experimental uh, study so to do to answer this question we introduced three setups the first setup is using the auto ml without uh, the uh, without the uh, the built-in feature engineering module we just feed the the raw the raw data uh, to the AutoML tool without the, the internal uh, feature engineering uh, module and, for the, and we evaluate all the outputs using the F1 score. This is the baseline and then the second approach we use the built-in feature engineering tool and then the third, the third setup which is the combination. This is the target setup that we are, uh, uh, that we are examining. We also uh, disabled the internal feature engineering tool, but we use the uh, we uh, we use the uh, the feature engineering preprocessors of AutoFeed. So we feed the raw data to into AutoFeed, and the uh, the output, which are the processed features, uh, uh, is is being fed again to the AutoML, and all of them, as we said, is uh, evaluated using F1 score. AutoFit is used in two modes. The first mode we use only feature selection, and then the second mode we used one step feature extraction in addition to the feature selection. And we couldn't manage to, uh, to run it with more than one, uh, one iteration as we will uh, elaborate at the end with the limitation of the AutoFit. Uh, for the AutoML frameworks, we use two frameworks which are the state of the art uh, of the state of the art of the auto uh, auto ML framework uh, auto scalar is a, a version optimization based technique and tpot is a genetic uh, programming based technique <laughs> to do so we selected also 22 data sets to cover most of the meta meta features uh, data set meta features like the the number of classes most of them are binary class binary class binary class data sets and some of them are uh, multi-class data sets and also we covered uh, a wide range of uh, wide range of the number of features number of instance and percentage of the majority class so now let's go to the results of the three the three setups that we introduced the first one is the baseline which is uh, as we said the auto ml uh, just the auto ml with the built-in feature preprocessor disabled the auto ml setup we enable the internal feature preprocessor and in the combined setup we stopped the the internal feature preprocessor feature engineering preprocessor of the auto ml and uh, and enable and used the uh, the auto feed as a feature engineering preprocessor so as we see for most of the data sets with high, with large number of columns has improved using the combined setup and the combined setup here is using just uh, a feature selection. A feature selection. This is this graph is for uh, auto scikit learn, and the same patterns are here for the uh, the T pot. We did uh, another experiment, which is, is it this? Those are the three setups that we. Uh, this is a bit dif uh, a bit different. We will I will explain why. Uh, we are in this experiment we are ex we are uh, evaluating if it is better to invest more time in the feature generation step or invest more time in the auto mail process so this um, uh, this in this setup we increased we doubled the the time the time budget allowed to the auto mail to search for the optimal pipeline six times and in this setup we added an extra feature generation step so 
and this is the previous combination of uh, auto feed with only feature selection uh, and the auto mail with the feature engineering uh, preprocessor disabled and this is the same baseline so here we see that most of the uh, most of the data sets the uh, the best performing co uh, configuration is either is the combined setup either with uh, only feature selection or with um, uh, or with one f one iteration of feature generation of course the auto ml is doing uh, uh, is doing better in some of these configuration like here here this is for auto circuit lane and the same pattern is uh, is also here for the teapot but we we noticed some uh, and analyze uh, out of our analysis we noticed some differences that teapot is performing slightly better than auto circuit layer because a teapot is creating a dynamic pipeline where it can include as much uh, as much preprocessors or feature engineering preprocessors at as needed uh, but in auto circuit learn the pipeline structure is fixed and it can only include a single feature feature preprocessor that's why it the uh, the, the the result of teapot is slightly better than auto circuit learn when it's we noticed also that increasing the time budget improves the performance of the auto mail uh, so it it's good to um, uh, to invest more time in the auto ml uh, uh, more time for the time budget of the auto ml itself the combined setup uh, that combines uh, auto feed with auto ml mostly outperforms the pure auto ml solution with the same time budget but it couldn't uh, it couldn't beat the this the same the same the the auto ml uh, the, the auto ml with the f the, pre the feature engineering preprocessors enabled when we doubled the uh, when we when we doubled the uh, the time budget six times again generating new features improved the performance of the performance score of the combined of the combined setup and finally feature feature extraction phase has the largest impact of the performance score compared to the the effect of the model selection and hyperparameter tuning done by the auto mail because the 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 figures of the figures of auto circuit lane and teapot are almost the same but the 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 most difference comes from the three setups that we were examining uh, finally regarding the the uh, auto fit limitations auto fit has uh, a space and time complexity of double exponent the number of iterations uh, which means the it's even worse than exponential complexity because for, for in each iteration uh, the, the they try they try to apply to they try to apply the the the, the operators the operators k over the all the combine the feature combinations so if we have n feature then the the the, the, the combination and the first iteration are n square in the second iteration it will be n squared by n squared which is n squared to the power of two and so on so the the memory the memory the consumption of the memory is exploding uh, double exponentially so that's why that's why it can for it can't be uh, used for real for real data set uh, for real data sets let's take some example like the tumor c data set tumor c data set uh, is 1.8 megabytes and after the first iteration uh, it will uh, it became 12 gigabyte almost 12 gigabytes and if we uh, if we try to run the the second iteration it will turn it into uh, 600 bitabytes only if such RAM of course exists that's why it's uh, it needs a serious improvement in, uh, uh, in the in the technique that they use in order to extract this kind of feature finally if the data set doesn't have a large number of columns and it can fit uh, into the memory then it takes also so long because the time complexity is almost is almost the same maybe it, it is for some data sets it takes more than 24 hours <coughs> 
Finally, we can uh, conclude that a pure feature selection is uh, adding and improving the, uh, the, the performance score of the pipeline generated by the AutoML, but single step of feature generation and minor improvement. And we expect that if we can apply the feature extraction with deeper and more iteration, then the performance score will improve uh, dramatically. This is all, that's all from my side. Thank you for your attention. See you.